What's going on YouTube and welcome back to all my Cloud Scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross and this is the Cloud Scholars Podcast. In today's episode, what I want to talk to you about is the life of a help desk analyst, what you should expect uh, when you first start your job, and this is uh, a bunch of principles for success. That's what I would like to call this video, uh, principles for success with being a help desk analyst. So um, you're probably uh, clicked on this video because you're trying to switch into IT and you heard you probably got to start off with the help desk job, which most people do start off in that role. Uh, my, I myself started as a PC technician and then spent some time as a help desk analyst and then started managing a help desk. Um, but you know, if you're, if you're this, what you're clicking on this video for, this is the right video for you, or perhaps you just got a offer letter for a help desk analyst job and you're like, okay, well, how do I prepare myself? This video is definitely for you. So a little bit about myself. Um, I've been working in IT for about 16, 17 years. Um, the, my first uh, couple of years in IT, first two years, I was a contractor. Um, what I did was I was a PC technician and I would do break fix. I was you know, doing a lot of PC repairs, uh, printer repairs, things of that nature. And then I moved on to doing some application support uh, with you know the bank when I was working at Citibank. So I did that for a couple of years and then I managed the help desk for close to eight years and I was a senior IT support engineer for about three years uh, for another company. So I understand how the help desk works and manage the help desk. So I, I feel like I'll have some really good information to provide to you, right? So what I, what I, what I want you to know is if you're clicking on this video, I'm not going to give you any hype. I'm going to tell you these are real good principles, certain things that you should be taking into consideration. I know a lot of times you click on videos and what you're seeing is, hey, you know, this is how you get in cybersecurity or all this other stuff. And there's a lot of hype videos. I'm not giving you any of that stuff, right? So I just want to start off by just letting you know that this is going to be some real detailed information. So let's jump into it. Start of your day. So as a help desk analyst, when you're starting off your day, you're going to do uh, one or two things, right? So your first, you should be checking your emails and then you should be looking at your ticketing system. So some people might be saying, well, why don't you just go to the ticketing system if you're working at help desk? The reason why I say that is because if there is an issue happening, there is going to be a flood of emails. So let's say a system is down, right? Or application is down or something's going on. You're going to see a flood of emails. What you're doing when you're working as a help desk, you're going to be, you need to take a look at the highest priority thing. So they probably have some kind of leveling system within the company, like level one, level three, level five, and you know, level five might be severe or level one might be severe. Every company is different. So what you want to do is you want to start off your day by, you know, checking your emails and just, you know, catching up to what happened when you were gone. You know, this is if this is 24 hours, like a hospital system, then yeah, you definitely want to do that. Um, some places, you know, you might start at eight o'clock in the morning, but you still need to look at it because there might have been a system going down at night and then you've got your networking team looking into it or application team working at night and you weren't even aware of it. So um, you want to definitely check your emails as you're starting your day. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is the roles and responsibilities of somebody in the help desk position. This might be help desk, might be support desk, whatever they call them, but you are the frontline worker, right? So uh, you are the first representative that anyone sees when it comes to IT or everyone hears or interacts with. So with, with that comes a lot of responsibility. So your role is, you know, being that person that greets the user, right? Um, and then also taking their information. So you're going to be taking information like their first name, their last name, employee ID, uh, the application that they're having a problem with, you know, whether it's dev, cert, or, or, or prod. Um, these are just different environments, right? That's what I, what I mentioned when I say dev, cert, and prod. So you're going to be taking a lot of information. Every company is a little bit different of what information that you need to take. But what I would tell you to do is find out, hey, what are the baseline information that I need to, to gather uh, for um, a specific issue. Now, sometimes it may be a little bit different. If you're a help desk analyst for a multi-client uh, company, so you're a help desk analyst and you have five different clients, you need to understand each client and what their needs are. So when they call in from ABC company, oh, okay, I need to take this three pieces of information. If they come in from one, two, three company, then you need these five um, pieces of information as a baseline. Because your responsibility is to have that ticket, hold that ticket, and make sure that the user's issue gets resolved. Your other responsibility as well, your many other responsibilities, is you need to transfer it to the right team. And that's something that you really have to get an understanding of what's going on. Because 
if you transfer the ticket to the wrong team, so let's say if it's an issue with the application and you transfer it to the networking team, what they're going to do is they're going to send it back and they're probably going to send an email to the help desk manager, your manager, and say, what is this person doing? They don't know what they're doing. This doesn't go to this team. And they're going to reference that ticket in the email. I've seen it happen a bunch of times. And you don't want that to happen to you. So get an understanding when you get in. So, okay, which team does this go to? And some, you know, some environments might be complex. So if you could come up with a cheat sheet and saying, okay, this is for this team is for this application and this team is for this application, then it will help you out. Now, there may be times where an issue is happening and you're like, man, it could either go to this team or this team. Trust me, that happens. What I would do if I was you is I would send an email to my boss and say, hey, we're really dealing with this issue. You know, I'm not really sure what team this goes to. Or perhaps you could send an email to both teams with the ticket and say, hey, this is the issue that's going on. This is the documentation. This is the problem that they're facing. You know, does this go to your team? It looks like it could probably go to the application team or the networking team, et cetera, et cetera. What I would do as well is when you run into situations like that, it's always a learning opportunity. So what you should do is once the issue is resolved, then find out from the networking team, hey, what can I do to figure this out? Or what troubleshooting steps can I have? So this way I don't send you guys bull crap. And I guarantee they're gonna say, you know what? I like this girl, I like this guy. You know what, this is what you should do. They might even give you access to an application of their own, right? Some networking interface application that they're using or to monitor the network that you have read rights. So that this way now you can see what's going on or they might give you some information on how to test it out. Say, hey, just ping this uh, server or ping this IP address or whatever that the need is and they'll give you some stuff. So now you're building your skill set because you're finding out how to troubleshoot things and your knowledge is growing. So that's really what you know uh, you, you want to be like when you're talking about the roles and responsibilities and things you need to, to pay attention to. Another thing I want to mention is I said you're the first in, in, in line when it comes to dealing with issues, customer service. You need to have a customer first mindset. And you might be saying, well, I work for the company. I'm, I'm in IT. Well, I don't understand what you mean customer service. And I've had staff members like that before. The reason why I'm saying you need to pay attention and realize you are, you are, they're their customer and you're working for them, even though you work for the same company and their colleague, because depending on the organization you work for, if you are in um, finance, you're not bringing in revenue. If you're in uh, the medical field, you're not bringing in revenue. The doctors are bringing in revenue. The bankers are bringing in revenue for finance. And then when it comes to legal, the lawyers are bringing in revenue. You're an expense. So you need to, you need to think about that you're an expense. And what happens if you're not doing a good job, what they're going to do is they're going to go outside, find a third party vendor and have them come in for a cheaper cost and replace and do the help desk work. Now, if they come in and do that, does not necessarily mean that that third party vendor is going to give better quality, right? But that's not up to you anymore because guess what? One, it was never your decision in the first place. And two, you're out of a job. So it's really important that you think about that as you work and the rest of your team should be thinking of that way too. We are customer service first. So um, keep that in mind. I know that was probably a shock for some of you, but it's definitely something that you should always have at the top of your head. Okay, so let's talk about uh, ticketing and documentation a little bit. So um, we talked a little bit about ticketing, about routing those tickets to the right places, but your documentation needs to be on point. You need to say exactly what you did, how you did it, and um, how long the issue was going on. So you want to make sure that you're documenting very, uh, you need a detailed documentation because if you don't provide detailed documentation, you're just going to cause frustration amongst the other team. So uh, keep in mind about the way you're, you're doing your ticketing and your documentation and understand how that works. Even if you can do a screenshot, put a screenshot in there because a screenshot says a thousand words. It explains a lot of different things. So I would definitely, I was really big on using a snipping tool within Windows and doing a lot of screenshots because even if I don't understand what's going on, I can send a screenshot and whoever I send that to that application team will say, okay, I understand exactly what the issue is. So you're a help desk person, you're gonna have a general knowledge. Now, when you send it to different teams, they have the specialty knowledge. They're the ones who have the extensive knowledge uh, when it comes to that specific application or network or whatever um, the issue is within your environment. So you always wanna keep that in mind. Another thing I wanna talk about is problem solving skills so um, and technical knowledge. So problem solving skills and technical knowledge. So you don't know what you don't know, right? Uh, when you first start off, you're probably not gonna be that great at it. 
Uh, hopefully you've gotten some certifications. So you have some doing some IT reading like A plus or network plus security plus. Those are kind of like the baseline, like early stage career um, certifications. But you, you're going to have to work on your problem solving skills. And the only way you're going to get better at problem solving skills is increasing your knowledge. So don't be a help desk person that only does work when they're at work. You want to be a help desk person that does work even when they're not at work. So you need to, you know, do a lot of reading. You're in IT now, so you're always going to be learning, right? There's never a time where you're saying, okay, I've gotten to that point. I'm done. No, they're coming out with new technology all the time. So Microsoft just came out with Microsoft Entra. Well, it's been out for a while, but now they have the release and it's, that's going to take over Azure Active Directory. They're always changing. There's always something going on in technology. So you need to constantly keep learning um, and then figure out what path you're trying to go. I know you don't want to stay in the help desk the whole time, right? And this is what kind of goes into career growth, the next topic I want to talk about. So you always want to say, okay, well, what do I want to learn? What do I you know, want to get better at? And me, I always advocate everybody to go to the cloud, right? Whether it's AWS, GCP, or Azure, I'm always telling people to go to the cloud. But you always want to do things to, to make sure that you're doing some type of career growth within that role as a help desk analyst. So if you're working somewhere, and this is this is this, I want you all to be aware of this, because I've had help desk analysts that have worked places for like 10 years, 15 years, and they're doing the same thing. You you want to continue to grow. That's the only way you're going to make more money. The more you know, the more you earn, right? So when it comes to trying to do career growth, if you're in a place where you're doing the same thing, the first six months you're doing the same thing that you're, excuse me, if you're doing the same thing in three years that you were doing the first six months, you need to go because you're not learning anything new. And if they were to let you go and you try to find another job, you're going to have a hard time because your skills are outdated. So I, I would always tell people, listen, get your experience, get like a year in, probably two years. If you feel that comfortable, you want to go a little further, but then go. Like, don't stay there. You know, you probably get more money going somewhere else and you're going to learn new things. But while you're in that role, don't just get a paycheck. Learn as much as you can and then get your certifications and then leave and go to another company. Trust me on that. Now, if you're in a good role, right, you're in a company that has some growth with it, then there's things that you can do as a help desk technician to to make sure that management sees you. So I had a help desk analyst I had um, uh, hired one time. And one thing that this guy did, and I still talk to him up to this day, very smart guy. Uh, he was two months in, two, two and a half months in. And one thing that he did was he ended up um, providing a new help desk analyst checklist. So it was an onboarding checklist of what was needed for the help desk analyst. Now, mind you, I was IT director at this time, and I had a bunch of hospitals I was managing. I had a whole bunch of different things. And the oversight of them, of the help desk analyst was certain stuff. Like there were certain things I just missed. I was just constantly extremely busy at that at that place um and but what i'm saying is what he did he took the initiative to say hey i'm going to do this onboarding checklist and he documented his 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 onboarding and then he put a, a document together he sent me an email say hey this is what i've been working on what do you think and i was so impressed by that and this is what i'm telling you because your manager is going to have a lot of things on their plate they're going to be looking into a lot of things you're on the front line so bring stuff to their attention they're going to really appreciate it and what happens if there's an opportunity for growth they're going to remember hey this person goes the extra mile i'm going to promote that person so what i want you to do is take all that into consideration when you're trying to build your technical knowledge and your problem solving skills uh it's going to lead to your career growth and your career growth the way you you do your career growth if you're in a really good company is to make sure that you are documenting information, finding the gaps, because there's always ways to improve, and then this way, making sure that the people who need to see are able to see that. So, I mean, hopefully it works out for you like it did uh, for a um, colleague of mine um, who ended up being the help desk lead, you know, got more money and stuff like that. So hopefully that works out for you as well. Another thing I want you to keep in mind when it comes to the help desk is, uh, I'm going back to the ticket and documentation. Uh, cause this, this resolves, this goes around resolve time. That is a major statistic that management is going to be looking at the resolve time. They're going to be looking at the tickets you close, how many tickets you close compared to everybody else. And you don't want to be that last technician. So if you have five technicians and one technician is closing about in a week, I don't know, 85 tickets and somebody's closing about 30 tickets, you're going to say, well, what's going on here? Why is the disparity so, you know, so far off? So you want to make sure that you're, you're closing out your tickets and your resolve time is really huge. That is 
how long from when the ticket was open to the, the ticket was closed, you know, what's the average resolve time and you want to make yours as soon as possible. With the help desk, I like to look at help desk as not just, hey, hey, we're here to reset passwords and update information in Active Directory. I like to look at the help desk as a, a group of individuals that are going to fix the problem before they pass it on. And they're going to try to do as much as possible on that first interaction with the user than anything else. So how you interact with the user. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for calling the help desk. My name is Kieran Trust. How can I help you? Those are scripts. Those are ways that you speak to people. How you get off the call. Hey, you know, thank you for calling the help desk once again. Um, is there anything else that I can help you out with? Is there any other issues that you're dealing with? Okay, are you fine with me closing out the ticket? All right, thank you. Have a good day. You have these scripts that you need to, to you need to embody when you're working as a help desk, and that's the good customer service. Because what's going to happen is somebody's going to send an email to your boss and say, "Hey, you know, this person was really good. They were very professional." Blah, 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 blah. And the more you get those kind of messages, the more you get the career rope. So resolve time is really big. How long it takes you to close a ticket out, following up with tickets um, is another thing that you need to take into consideration as well when you're working in the help desk. So I don't want to make sure I, I, I didn't forget anything. So I talked about starting a day. We talked about roles and responsibilities. We talked about resolve time, ticket and documentation, customer first mindset, technical knowledge, problem solving skills, career growth. And then finally, I'm going to talk about stress and pressure. You're going to deal with a little bit of stress. I mean, every job comes with a bit of stress, pressure, um, but these are the times where the stress and pressure is going to really happen the most is when the system is down. When a critical application is down or a site is down, there's no network connectivity, you are going to deal with a little stress and pressure because the phone calls are going to get flooded in, right? You're going to start seeing a whole bunch of emails and then you're going to have somebody else on the phone with you from senior management. Hey, what's going on? You know, what did you do? What did you fix? And this kind of third. And the reason why I led with all the other issues, I'm sorry, of the other topics where I talked about roles and responsibilities, custom mindset, uh, technical knowledge, and I talked about documentation is because you're going to have less stress if you document correctly. You're going to have less stress if you have the right knowledge. You're going to have less stress if you do the problem solving. So this is the things that I want you to keep in mind when you're going about doing these kind of stuff, when it comes to like stress and pressure and all that other stuff, um, it, it gets minimal when you um, know what you're doing, right? And you, it takes time to get to that point. So I want to thank you all for watching this video. That is the end. This, those are my key principles to, you know, being a successful help this analyst. These are the things that you should be aware of before you start the job. But before I let you go, I want to say a positive note because I like to leave, uh, end all these uh, podcast videos with a positive note. And this one is, your life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. So I want to thank you for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like or subscribe button. Here at Cloud Scholars, you know what my goal is, is to get you from scholar to consultant and, of course, consultant to expert. Thank you. I'll see you next time. <music>